Morning. Okay, so welcome to day two of the WebEx session on uh, transportation management. Yesterday we reviewed the integration of TM with SRM and ECC, so we reviewed the uh, shopping cart process and those key fields that you had to keep in mind when creating a shopping cart that would have a direct impact in TM. And today we're going to do the same thing, but we're going to focus on, as you can see on the presentation on the screen, the integration fields for inter and intramission transfers. So I'm not sure how many of you uh, raise STOs, STRs for uh, transfers, intramission transfers and intermission transfers. However, we're going to go briefly through the main fields of an STO, STR, to ensure we understand which fields are going to have a direct impact in TM. It's going to work the same way. So basically, these fields that we're going to be populating are also going to be those that relate to the uh, delivery date, inco terms. But in this case, we're going to have storage locations are going to be our main, uh, let's say, delivery address uh, data information. So the storage locations we add to an STO will already populate the system with the final delivery address in TM. So we're not going to have to manually add any of the delivery addresses. So let's go and see basically what we're going to cover today. So the main purpose, identify key transactions in ECC that will have a direct impact in TM when creating STRs and STOs for inter and intramission transfers. We're going to show the output documents and data in TM of ECC transactions when creating STRs and STOs for, again, inter and intermission transfers. And we're going to also, again, understand the link, as we did yesterday, between ECC's purchasing group plant with the planning and execution group in TM. So remember, as we did yesterday with the shopping carts, the purchasing groups would eventually be linked to the planning and execution groups in TM, and this would allow the role of TS01 and 02 to view the DTRs and freight units to plan. So now for inter and intermission transfers, the roles are changed. Now the roles are TS07 and TS08. All right, but again, it'll be the same thing. You'll have a TM planner who is going to plan the transportation and submit events expected and unexpected, and then you'll have the TS08 who will manage the freight orders, assign the carriers and update the dates, locations, and routes, and so on. So let's take a look at that. Basically, this is the end-to-end -end scenario, but I've covered up what we're not going to be focusing on in this presentation. What our main focus is right now is the procurement phase with inter- and intermission transfers. The INCO terms involved in these transfers are DAP, XWorks, and FCA. Now, one thing that we have to keep in mind right from the beginning is that INCO terms for inter- and intermission transfers are not commercial terms, so they don't work as they did for the shopping cart. It doesn't mean that DAP is vendor-related, XWorks is freight forwarder-related, and FCA is a shared responsibility between vendor and freight forwarder. In this case, what the INCO terms do or the impact that they have in TM is if the responsibility falls on the receiving mission or the shipping mission. Those are the ones who will have the TS07 or 08 who will be responsible for either planning, submitting events, or managing freight orders. Okay, so INCO terms, and that's one of the main focuses for transfers, inter- and intermission transfers, are not commercial terms. They simply make either the shipping or the receiving plant responsible for managing transportation. So let's see first the integration fields in the transfers that we'll have to keep in mind and populate when creating STRs and STOs that will have a direct impact then when we're planning in TM. So you see them here when we're creating STRs or creating STOs. The fields are plant, storage location, purchasing group, incoterm, incoterm location, delivery date, and purchasing org. Basically, those fields that we'll be populating when creating an STR and STO will have an impact then in the outbound delivery document, and eventually, just like we saw in the shopping cart for the inbound delivery document, this will generate, again, our DTRs and our freight units. So it works the same way. If you have 
three outbound delivery documents, you have three DTRs. If you have one, you have one DTR, one freight unit, just the same way as it did with the inbound. Again, we're also going to be focusing on the packing for STOs. Now, we saw that this is a required process for uh, shopping carts and POs when we have an inbound delivery document. Packing was, has become required because it affects directly the SOW document in TM. We have the correct measures, weight, and volume of the goods that we're transporting, and that eventually will impact when we're soliciting freight. So again, for STOs and STRs, it's the same thing. Packing becomes critical as well as we uh, indicate the type of packaging material that we're using and the handling units created. Now, with STRs and STOs, according to the attendees that we had in our workshop, packing usually occurs because it's a responsibility of the UN, so we're the ones who indicate how we're packing our goods and how they're being transported. But with shopping carts, a lot of the times this step was skipped because the vendors already uh, told us how to pack and they were the ones responsible for that. So remember, just as it was for SRM with shopping carts, with STOs and STRs, packing is also important. So let's see now our next screen. And we're going to start by looking at integration fields with STRs. Okay, so when we're raising an STR, we have to ensure that we have the plant, storage location, purchasing group, and purchasing org fields populated. Now let's take a look at how that looks in ECC. So again, the roles and who raises STRs, STOs, and who approves them, that is exactly the same and works exactly the same as it does uh, naturally now. So the roles are not changing. The only thing we're focusing on is those fields that are critical now to populate in an STR so that they have an impact in the STO and then eventually in TM. So we have to add basically the receiving plant receiving storage location, purchasing group, delivery date, and purchasing org in the STR. So these fields, the receiving plant, will eventually indicate the receiving plant requesting the goods. The storage location will add the delivery address. Purchasing group will link to the planning group. The delivery date, again, is the actual delivery date that will have an impact in TM when we're doing our planning. And the purchasing organization is always going to be the one for the UN, which is 1,000. But we just have to make sure we add that so that in TM, there's a linkage uh, directly with the STO raised in the outbound delivery document. So the purchasing group added in the STR will derive in TM as the planning and execution group, as you can see here, which provides visibility of DTR and FU documents. Purchasing organization is basically just the United Nations sales organization number. The plant and receiving storage location define destination location and address in TM. Just like for shopping carts, we added a delivery address manually by adding a storage location in the STR that will define our address and the plant will define our destination location. Okay, again, remember, I'm going to simply move on through the slides at any time. Just raise the hand, click on the icon, and I can stop and unmute you and you guys can speak up. Let me see if anyone has registered late for the session. So far, no. So we have one, two, three, four, five people attending the session so far. Again, this is a screenshot here. If you're looking at the PowerPoint that I'm sharing, the fields are highlighted here in yellow. And they are the ones that we're going to be populating in the STR to ensure that the above mentioned data will actually uh, appear in TM. Okay, so each delivery date, this is very important as well, just like with the shopping cart, will have an impact in the number of outbound documents, DTRs, and freight units generated. Okay, so three different delivery dates eventually will generate three different outbound delivery documents. Okay, let's go to our next integration fields now with STOs instead of STRs. So for STOs, again, purchasing group is also key, and we understand already why, because the purchasing group derives the planning and execution group in TM, provides visibility of DTR and FU documents for the planner. And basically, when raising an STO, the purchasing group would be found under the org data tab. 
and we have to ensure that this field is populated. If not, when we go into TM, the planner will not be able to see the DTR generated from this STO, and it's outbound. Okay, again, the plant and storage locations, if we remember, that will define the destination location and the delivery address. So the first thing we're adding is the supplying plant information, which is at header level in the STO. We ensure we have that populated, and then within the STO fields, we have the also supplying issuing storage location here that when added, we're going to be indicating the delivery address. Our next field is the incoterm and incoterm location which again will have an impact in TM and how the impact is, um, let's say, produced. It does, uh, remember, I'll restate this, it's not a commercial term. So in this case, the INCO term added at header level will have an impact on which plant, either the supplying or receiving, plans transportation, submits events, and manages freight orders. INCO term location selected indicates the TM handover location for FCA final destination for DAP or pickup location in XWorks for the carriers assigned. So eventually, if there are freight forwarders involved in the transportation of these goods, which there will be for a lot of cases, maybe for the intramission transfers, we use our own UN vehicles, and we'll get to that in a bit on how we track that or if we track that now in phase two for TM. But eventually, if we're using freight forwarders, when we add the FCA, DAP, or XWorks INCO terms, of course, that will also have an impact in TM. Okay, but remember, basically, one of the key aspects to remember of the INCO terms and STOs and STRs is that they're not commercial terms, but they define if supplying or receiving plant are the ones responsible for planning transportation, submitting events, or managing freight orders. Okay, the INCO term field is found under the delivery invoice tab. And we add in the first field the INCO term, and the next one the INCO term location. Okay, so I'm moving on to the delivery date. So again, remember the roles are still the same. Whoever is raising STRs, whoever is raising STOs, whoever is approving them, that continues to be exactly the same. We're only going through the main integration fields. So each delivery date added to each line will have an impact on the number of outbound documents, DTRs, and freight units generated. Okay, so we're expected to have one shipment per each STO, according to what has been told to us by our students and uh, personnel in, in MoveCon or those raising the STOs, is that usually when we raise an STO, we expect to have one single shipment for this STO, which means that eventually the delivery date should all be the same in that STO. We won't create an STO with several uh, delivery dates, but one with all same delivery dates. If there is a need for two STOs, they need to be split at the STO creation when adopting materials from the STR. Okay, so again, here the delivery date and purchasing group. So the delivery date field, as we see here, is where we would have to fill it in. So you see it's at line item level. And last but not least, here with intra-mission transfers, STO creation, the main integration fields are the same as the ones we've seen for intermission transfers and STRs, plant, purchasing group, incoterm, and incoterm location. So again, we add the relevant supplying plant or shipping plant, determining the source location in TM. And this is done again at the supplying plant header level field where we see that we add the supplying plant information. So it works the same as for the intermission transfers. Remember, supplying plant information will determine the source location or origin location, while the receiving plant will determine the destination location. Okay, incoterm added at header level will determine in TM which plant, supplying or receiving, plants transportation submits events. So I can't stress this enough because I know that it's a very different story for UNOE scenarios. We know that 
the vendor that we select will determine the source location, that the INCO terms are commercial terms and to determine if a vendor or freight forwarder is responsible for transportation. But in STOs for intra and intermission transfers, this is different. It splits responsibility between supplying and receiving plants in terms of the uh, actions you perform in TM. Okay, transportation will still be performed by the freight forwarders or carriers and the uh, UN vehicles if they're used in any of these cases. Okay, so I'm going to move on to my next slide. Again, remember, purchasing group will derive in TM as the planning and execution group. So I believe that is the last part of this slide. Again, we're repeating the same things, different scenarios. So intermission scenarios and the fields that we have to populate are practically the same as for the intermission scenarios. But again, we don't have the STR beforehand. We're going directly to the STO and we have less integration fields. It's plant, purchasing group, incoterm, and incoterm location. Of course, the delivery address will also be key in the intermission transfers. Okay, so let's continue. Again, we're now seeing that the plant storage location, incoterm location, and delivery date for the intermission transfers have the same impact as the intermission transfers. So it's basically a repetition of what I've already said, but for a different scenario. Remember, plant will indicate the destination location or source location, depending on where we're adding that in the STO. Storage location will determine the delivery address. Incoterm location, which mission is responsible, which entity is responsible, whether it's the issuing mission or the receiving mission, and the delivery date will indicate the amount of outbounds that are generated from our STO. Okay, and in these, you also have a series of screenshots to indicate the location of these fields in the STO. All right, so now that we've already gone through the basic integration fields in the procurement phase, and let's say we've already created our STR, STO, it's been approved, and we created our outbound delivery document, we're gonna go and take a look at what that looks like and how that generates the TM documents that are the DTRs and the freight units. Remember, at any time, if you have a question, raise your hand right in the Q&A and I can Take a look at what you're requesting and you can speak up as well. So let's take a look at this slide for the TM document flow based on the uh, outbound delivery document <clears throat> and the impacts in TM. So again, number of outbound deliveries will be equivalent to the delivery transport request and freight units generated. They're directly linked to the INCO terms delivery dates added in the STO. So you're expected to have one outbound delivery per each STO. That's the main idea. Okay, we're not usually generating STOs to generate several outbounds, but we should have one outbound per STO. Again, if you do it differently in your mission, that hasn't changed. I'm just teaching you the integration fields when generating the STOs. If there's a need for two STOs, they should be split at STO creation when adopting materials from the STR, or you should generate several STOs if we're talking about intermission transfers that, of course, have no previous STR link to it. Remember, just as we saw with the inbound, the outbound also has a tab that is called TM status. This has been an incorporation now in ECC. And if you click on that tab when viewing your outbound delivery document, you will see all the uh, documents that are generated in TM, which are the DTRs and the freight units. Okay, and in this slide, we're going to see that. So eventually when clicking on the TM status tab, this will take us to the following screen where it'll show you the outbound delivery document you have here. And by selecting this line and clicking on document flow, as we see here, we will go directly to the information related to the DTRs and FUs in ECC. So this screen right here is in ECC. We're looking at our outbound delivery document. We clicked on the TM tab and then we clicked on the document flow button 
and this displays the outbound delivery document and the linked documents in TM, the DTR, as you see here, and the freight units here. So if by any chance you believe that you've done everything correctly when creating your STR, you uh, will see in the TM status flow if you have DTRs generated or freight units generated. If they're there, that means you did the process correctly. If they're not, that means something is missing. Okay, and some of the integration fields may be missing. Let me look at the Q&A because I see there's a question here. Which Umoja role is performing the STR, STO? Okay, so the roles are still the same. All right, so if the GSCC or the LSCC, right, Global Supply Chain Coordinator or Local Supply Chain Coordinator are performing these transactions now, they continue to do so. So the steps to create them and the roles involved in creating them are still the same. The only thing we're learning now is uh, the impact in TM that these will have, but the process is exactly the same. Okay, we have a question here. So, uh, Andrew, I'm going to unmute you now. Hi, Brian. The, the question, the previous, the, can you hear me? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Right. Okay, great. The previous question about the, the, um, the role of this who is going to do the STR and STO. In TM, we have to clarify this to the people so they can know which role is doing what. Because as a MoveCon, I create here the STR. Mm -hmm. And I can do it, but the role, it depends which role is, is the, um, the role I'm um, thinking is the TS707. Okay, but the, yeah, the TS07 and 08 are roles in TM. They won't be involved in creating STRs, STOs. Okay, so the person who's raising an STR and STO doesn't necessarily have to be the role in TM TS0708. Yeah, but the confusion here is that the people, they don't know why they have this role, let's say in TM. They have to clarify to the people what, what role in TM, what the 07, mm -hmm. what is doing actually, and is involved in each CC or in TM? This is the main question okay. for the, most of the people. Because right. we have to put a list, whatever we can do mm -hmm. in 07, let's say, or 08, yes. we have to clarify mm -hmm. to the people what is exactly, what is your, their job. Let's say if I'm okay, in so, and doing the STR, yes. I have this mm -hmm. role. It's not important. Yes. The two is parallel with them. I, I, this is the main question of the people. That's why I was clarifying this. In the, thank you. Okay. So... Uh, all right, thank you, Andrew. So if uh, I'm going to answer that, and if it's not clear, just raise your hand again and I'll unmute you. Well, actually, I'll, I'll leave you unmuted just in case you want to intervene. So it's true. Remember yesterday we first showed you the integration uh, fields for the shopping cart and PO, and then we went into the system to show you exactly what is expected from a TS0102 in TM. So what a, a planner or a uh, TM uh, freight order manager would do in TM. So not necessarily the same person doing the transactions in TM will be the one raising the shopping cart. So a requisitioner wouldn't necessarily have the role uh, in TM to do anything. The requisitioner would continue to do the job as they usually do, unless the mission, of course, also provide you with a role in TM, then that means that besides raising the shopping cart, you would have to do things in TM. But usually the roles in TM are granted to, let's say, MoveCon personnel is, is basically who would be performing transactions in TM. And the transactions are the ones that I'm going to get into in a bit. Yesterday, we went through some of them already, which were the ones where we were planning transportation. We were then editing the uh, FOs. We were submitting events. So that's what I'm going to go into in the next portion of the WebEx, okay? exactly what is expected of a TS0708 in TM. So far, we're just... Uh, going through the uh, elements in the STOs and STRs that have an impact in TM. But we still haven't said what the TS-07 is doing in TM or the TS-08 is doing in TM yet. Okay, yes, Andrew? Great. Yes, yes, right, yes. I'm going to get into that in a little bit. All right, so I have another question here. Uh, Maria? Hello, Maria?
Okay, so I thought you had a question, Maria. I'm going to mute you again. If you have a question, just click on the uh, hand raised. All right, so again, remember, we're only going through the uh, integration fields in STOs, STRs that will eventually have an impact in TM, so you guys can understand this as well. So let's say if some of you are working in the procurement division for goods, you may have a role in TM, so it's important to understand the integration fields. If some of you that are managing the outbound delivery documents as a logistic users and you have a role in TM, it's important that you also understand the integration fields. But basically the roles in TM are usually going to be provided to people working in MoveCon. Now we were provided with a list of attendees for these WebEx sessions because you were the ones according to the list provided that would receive the roles in TM and that's why you're a part of this WebEx. So we always like to start with integration fields that have an impact in TM so you understand where things are coming from and how they impact TM, but exactly the transactions and the things you do in TM, we covered them yesterday and we're gonna go through them again today. All right, now we're just going through the integration fields and we're basically with this presentation, we are coming to an end. This is the last part of the integration, which is the packing and how that impacts TM. So you also understand the SOW document that we saw yesterday and how that is directly impacted by the packing information that we're adding in an STR, STO, or sorry, in the outbound delivery document or in the inbound delivery document. Okay, so our last integration part is the one related to packing. We saw that yesterday and we also reviewed that the information that has to do with volume, weight, height, length, this information, also the, uh, the the gross volume that we're adding, whether it's cubic meters or any other value, how that is going to have an impact in the documents in TM. And eventually that has a downstream impact because when we have this STO document with this information that you see here from the packing, whether it's the packing material that we used or the handling unit that we have now, and the volume and weight that we've added to the packing will eventually have an impact in the SOW document and that when we're soliciting the freight will also have an impact in the cost of transportation. Remember that TM is there to now understand the uh, cost of transporting goods in the UN so that eventually our system can gather all this data and in the long run save money for the organization in terms of transportation of goods. Okay, so this is our last slide in the packing details. And again, just uh, reminding you guys why this is important. The data that we add here will eventually be in TM as well, and we'll see that in the SOW document. And we see that after all this information that we've uh, just kept in mind now for the integration fields, how those will have an impact in the documents in TM, DTRs, freight units, and again, we can go through this quickly. We saw that they have a direct impact, so one outbound, one DTR, one freight unit. All right, so that is our last slide for the integration fields, and now we're going to go into the TM transactions end-to-end -end and what a TS0708 would be doing to be able to plan transportation. Okay, so we can clarify like this what is expected of each role. Okay, so let me just close quickly the uh, presentation I have now and open my next one. Okay, so now we're going to take a look at TM and the transactions in TM impacted by what we just covered in STOs, STRs, right? Integration fields in those. So we've seen everything related to the procurement phase. Now, whether you are a local supply chain coordinator, certifying officer, global supply chain coordinator, does that mean you have a role in TM? Not necessarily. It all depends on if the mission believes that you are the best person indicated to have a role in TM to then plan transportation, procure, uh, sorry, uh, update the freight orders or submit events or not. That's a different story. But let's see now 
the purpose of the presentation and what we're going to learn here, okay? So first, identify the differences between inter and intermission transfers when managing transportation in TM. So this is TM related directly. Also, the steps involved in inter intermission transfers and the derivations in TM impacting receiving and sending plants, okay? So if you are the TS07 of a receiving plant or a sending plant, in an, let's say an STO scenario for inter or intermission transfers. This is important for you to understand when you will be impacted and when you will have to plan transportation, manage freight orders or submit events according to the information that was added in the STRs, STOs that we just saw in the presentation before. Okay, we're also going to understand key TM processes impacted by these transactions that we just covered. Okay, so we're going to learn to manage transportation from these intra and intermission transfers, manage freight orders generated from the planning of transportation, and finally, manage the events. Yesterday, we didn't have a chance to see the event management. Hopefully, today we do. If not, we still have an extra day, and the event management is actually a very uh, simple process in TM. I think that basically, if we understand how to manage transportation and freight orders, the event management will be very easy for us. Okay, the roles we're focusing on are TS07, 08. Okay, we added 09, again, just like we said yesterday, this is for a display all role. TS07 will manage transportation and events, and TS08 will manage the freight orders. Okay, we're, again, we're only focusing on intermission transfers that are ZINT. We're tracking shipment from one mission to another with the same fund, fund center. And for the intermission transfers, which are between missions, non-budget relevant, or between missions, budget relevant, or from the strategic deployment stock. So again, whether they're uh, STOs or STRs coming from these specific scenarios, let's see how that impacts TM, and if you're a TS07 or 08, how that would impact you directly, depending on which scenario we're looking at. Okay, so again, now we're here in the planning. I've divided this into two different scenarios, so if we're looking at intermission transfers, what we would have to do as TS07s, and if we're looking at intermission transfers, what we would have to do as TS 07s, okay? Intermission transfers can have three different types of INCO terms. Remember, they're not commercial agreements. This will only mean who is responsible for planning transportation, whether it's DAP, XWorks, or SCA. And for intermission transfers, we only have one INCO term to be used, which is DAP, because the mission that is requesting that has, uh, let's say, raised the STO and requesting the goods is the same one that's going to be managing it because in these scenarios, everything is happening within the mission, right? It's going from one location to another, but still within the mission. So let's take a look at that. For intra-mission transfers, the TS07 planner is going to be the one responsible for uh, selecting the freight units and planning transportation, okay? And that's going to be from the receiving plant, or if you want to call it the issuing plant. It's still the same one, right? It's the one requesting the goods that manages everything. So this is one of our easiest scenarios to understand. The TS-07 in the plant requesting the goods would manage the transportation. When we're talking about intermission transfers, it depends on the INCO term that was added to the STOs. If we added a DAP or an FCA INCO term, it's the shipping plant, the issuing plant, the one that is issuing the goods that is going to be managing transportation, while the one in X work scenario will be the receiving plant who manages transportation of the goods. Okay, we're going to take a look at that uh, in detail, and we're also going to go into TM to see how that works. Okay, so again, we're looking at inter intermission transfers, selecting freight units. So inter intermission transfers, DAP, XWorks, and FCA incoterm scenarios need to be planned by the TM planner, TS07. Freight units linked to the planning and execution group of the receiving or shipping plants appear in the transportation cockpit. The TM planner would choose the type of profile, as we saw yesterday, depending on the incoterm. 
and then would plan transportation according to that. So the first thing we do is select the correct profile. We saw that yesterday in the demo where we were selecting the correct profile, which looked like this. If you remember, we were adding the planning profiles to be able to see the INCO terms that we have to plan for, the freight units linked to those INCO terms. And we'll do that in the demo again today. So it's a lot clearer, I believe, when we go inside of the system and do it manually. But remember that before we go into the transportation cockpit to plan freight units, we first need to tell the system what INCO terms we want to look at. And that will display only the freight units linked to those INCO terms, whether it's DAP, XWorks, or FCA. OK, now, how do we select the freight units in the cockpit? Remember that we had a series of goods that need to be transported together that have different origin and destination and also delivery dates. Remember that there's also a seven date range considered if we're planning on combining goods to be transported together. Anything beyond that will not allow us to combine them together. Remember how this looked yesterday? This is the transportation cockpit. If you remember, we have our series of freight units that need to be transported. And if you are the TS07, whether you are from the issuing plant or receiving plant, depending on the INCO term that was added in the STO, you would have to manage transportation for these goods. So whoever receives this role would have to go into TM, look for the DTR, and plan the freight unit linked to it by selecting it in the cockpit and generating the best transportation proposal. Now, for intermission transfers, if it's a DAP or an FCA scenario, the shipping plant TS07 role would manage transportation of the freight units. If it's an X-Work scenario, it's the receiving plant who would manage transportation. Now, so that it's easier for you to understand, if you're a TS07, when you log into TM, all the DTRs and freight units that you are going to see are the ones that are linked to your role, to your planning and execution group. So you don't have to worry about this information because you're only going to be seeing the freight units that are assigned to you. So if you're the TS07 in the receiving plant, you're only going to be looking at the X-Work scenarios, the Incoterm X-Works, and you're only going to be seeing the freight units that you have to manage. You won't see anything from the shipping plant's uh, transportation cockpit. The shipping plant's TS07 would see all the freight units linked to the DAP and FCA scenarios. The receiving plant's TS07 would see the ones for X-Works. Okay, this is just information for you to understand the difference between one and the other. And this is only for intermission transfers. If we're talking about intermission transfers, it's much easier because the receiving plant's TS07 would manage all transportation. So basically, it makes sense. You're the one issuing the goods. You're the one receiving the goods, whether it's in one location or another, it's still the same mission. So you're responsible for planning the transportation of goods. In intermission transfers, it depends on the INCO term that was assigned in the STO as we were looking at in the presentation before. Okay, so this is important to understand. And now we're gonna see other slides which explain it a bit better and a bit more visually. Okay, so let's see if we're looking at an intermission transfer, okay, an STO for intermission, and it has a DAP INCO term. If you are the TS07, let's see who would be managing the transportation in a DAP scenario if you are the TS07. Is it the issuing plant or is it the receiving plant? So if we do have a request for transportation, a stock transfer with an INCO term DAP, this is how it would work. Okay, we have the transportation proposal that we have to generate, and we have the pre, main, and on legs that are usually going to be generated from a transportation proposal. And who would be responsible would be the issuing plant to plan transportation for all three legs. Okay, so basically all the transportation proposal and all the transportation from source to destination will be managed by the issuing plant's TS-07. Okay, so the TS-07 in the issuing plant would have to 
go into TM, review the DTRs and freight units assigned to them, and plan transportation for the whole process. This makes sense, and the AP is probably the INCO term mostly used for STOs. Okay, so it makes sense that the issuing plant manages the transportation from beginning to end. They will be responsible not only for managing the transportation, but also submitting events, as we'll see later on. If we change the INCO term, XWorks, right, still intermission transfer, the situation changes because now it's the receiving plant who will be responsible for planning transportation. It'll be the TS07 in the receiving plant who plans the transportation and manages the events. So as we see here, the TA-07 in the receiving plant would go into the cockpit, would plan transportation, and would manage the events for each one of the legs. Okay, the only one that is a bit more confusing would be in the case, and according to the uh, students that we had in the workshop in Valencia, the cases for FCA scenarios are very rare if there are any whatsoever in uh, STO transfer scenarios. But if the case is that we do have any FCA incoterm scenarios and STOs, the responsibility is shared between receiving and issuing plant in terms of managing transportation and managing the events. Okay, so in one of these scenarios, if the case were that there's ever a scenario for FCA and intermission transfers, usually it's always DAP or XWorks, the issuing plant would plan transportation to a certain point. So we have the transportation for at least the pre-leg. We would have that as well for the main leg and the final leg. So the way this works is that the issuing plant plans the transportation for this, but we'll see that when managing the events in each one, the situation is different. Okay, so you see FCA, issuing plant is responsible, DAP, issuing plant is responsible, XWorks, receiving plant is responsible. But who is responsible? The role of TS07 to manage transportation. Okay, as I said before, if you are a TS07, all you have to do is log into TM and the DTRs and freight units that are assigned to your planning group would be the ones you're responsible for. This is just information I'm providing to you so you understand the process. Okay, there's no need to go in and uh, figure out which ones you would have to transport or plan transportation for because if they are in your uh, cockpit or if they are in your DTRs that are assigned to you, you're the one who's responsible for managing transportation. Okay, in intermission transfers, it's much easier because it's always going to be the same plant, the plant that is issuing the goods and managing transportation, the one that's going to be in charge of planning transportation. So in intermission transfers, it's quite simple. The same plant that is issuing and receiving the goods, whether it's in a different location uh, within the same mission, is going to be the one responsible for planning transportation for each one of the legs. Okay, so the intermission transfer scenarios are quite simple. It's always going to be the plant issuing the goods and receiving the goods, the ones that are planning the transportation for this. Okay, so that would be the part of planning transportation and who's responsible for it, depending on the INCO term that was added to the STO. <clears throat> Any questions so far before we move on? This was only for planning transportation. Okay, so all we've learned so far is the responsibility of the TS07, whether it's from the issuing plant or receiving plant, to plan transportation for STOs that were generated in ECC. Okay, we see that basically after we select the freight units and plan transportation, Umoja generates the proposals as we saw yesterday and we'll see again today. We select the best proposal as TS07, and eventually this will calculate the charges. Umoja will do that for us, create the freight orders for each one of the legs, and eventually generate our SOW documents.
Okay, so we'll do something different today than we did yesterday. Now that we saw the planning portion and we understand the concept behind it, let's go into TM in the system and go through a quick demo of this exact process. Okay, so I'm going to log in as the TS07 and I'm going to go through an intermission scenario, whether it's a DAP or an XWorks, just to show you the process in TM for planning transportation. We did this yesterday. The process is exactly the same. The only difference has been for you guys to understand who would be responsible for planning transportation depending on the INCO term. But if I'm logging in as a TS07 for a receiving plant or an issuing plant in TM, it makes no difference because what I see is what I plan. All right, so I'm going to exit this uh, uh, PowerPoint and I'm going to go into the system and perform the demo for you guys. Okay, in the meantime, if you have any questions, write them in the chat and the Q&A, sorry, or raise your hand and we can address them. So just give me two minutes to log in. All right, so I'm gonna copy this information from the user ID. I'm just logging into uh, TM right now, so just bear with me. Okay, so here we are. Again, remember, we go to the Umoja training system. Let's expand the selection here. We go to T5T. And once our new screen loads, we add the username information that is this one. Let me go back to my Word document, make sure that I copy the correct username and add it here. And the password is umoja123, which is also in your cover page. Remember, we click on Lunch, Launch and WBC. And when we have our next screen here, we do the same. And eventually, this takes us to the TM screen. So again, to go back to your uh, question, Andrew, we have, this is what I would do as a TS07. OK, in this case, I am the TS07 in the receiving mission, according to the cover page, because this exercise scenario is an X-Work scenario for an intermission transfer. So an intermission transfer where the, with the um, global supply chain coordinator, local supply chain coordinator, whoever has raised the STO has incorporated an X-Works INCO term. Remember, the X-Works INCO term is not a commercial term. It's only indicating who is responsible for planning transportation. So in this case, it should be the TS07 role in the receiving mission. So as the TS07 in the receiving mission, I log into TM. And the first thing I do is the same thing we did yesterday. I go to ERP logistics integration and I search for my DTRs, okay? So the delivery transportation requirement. There's a requirement for transportation. Just like someone in a warehouse would look for a, a transfer order or something that is a requirement within inventory or warehouse, for TM, it works the same way. There's a requirement for transportation to be planned. So as the TS07, I'm looking for that. So in the search fields that appear here, I can simply add the outbound delivery document under the original delivery or the original order for the STO. So if you guys go back to your cover page, you have that information here too. So I should be able to search for my DTRs here or by looking at the outbound delivery document. In this case, I don't have an outbound, but I do have the STO. So I'm going to just copy this number and add it to the field that is linked to the order, original order. And I can simply add it here. And when I click on apply, I should have a DTR document. You see it just changed the 1905. So when I do so, when I look at the, let's say the DTRs that I have pending to plan, 
this is how I would do it. I would go into TM, search by uh, STO or outbound delivery number and find out which ones are pending to be planned. So far, this is the one. So if I click on the DTR number here, we see this next screen that opens like we saw yesterday is the one for the DTR number. So that means there's a requirement for transportation. Here in the general data tab, we already have information linked to what has been added in the STO. That's why it was important for me to explain the integration fields in the STO so we understand where all this information is coming from. It's coming directly from the STO that we generated. You see here the sales group that we saw. This would be linked to the purchasing group, which was linked to the planning group, STO UNAMI in TM, and also the sales organization that I was talking about before. The XWorks is the INCO term that was added in the STO and also the Incoterm location, Unimid El Fasher. So you see all the data that I was showing to you before is directly linked in TM here. So now you understand where it comes from. If we go to our document flow tab, we see that we have all the linked documents as we saw yesterday. We have our DTR, we have our outbound delivery from ECC, and we have our freight unit. We see that we have no freight orders, so nothing has been planned. No transportation has been planned for these goods to be transported. We also see in the location, dates, and times tab here where this is coming from and where it's going. Okay, so it's coming from Unimid El Fasher and it's going to UNAMI <clears throat> and the specific location. The address below, this is coming from the storage location that we added in the STO. Whoever generated the STO added this location, and here's where we have the origin or source address and destination address. The information of the items here is also identified by what we did in the packing. So if this, these goods were packed, this should also be reflected here. So this is another scenario because since this is the exercise provided to you guys, packing has not been performed because I'm just going directly to TM. But these should also be packed so the correct information is also in TM. But since I'm showing you how to plan transportation, we're only going to do that. So basically we see the information in the DTR here, we realize that nothing has been planned, no freight orders have been planned. So I can go back to my main screen now, now that I've seen my DTR according to the STO, and I would go to planning. Here's where I would go to start planning transportation for these goods. Okay, and where do I go here? I go to the transportation cockpit. Okay, I'm the TS-07 in the receiving mission and I'm planning transportation for goods that I'm supposed to be receiving. Okay, in this case, it's gone directly to my transportation cockpit. And why has it done that? And I want to explain this because this is important for you to understand. In the profile selection, if we go back to this profile selection, this is the planning profile screen that I was talking about before. This is usually the screen you'll be directed to the first time that you're supposed to be planning transportation for goods. Once you're at this screen, what you have to define here is the type of incoterm that you want to see freight units for. Okay, the good thing about STOs and STR transfers, so whether it's intermission or intromission, is that you only have one single planning profile to add. Once you've added that one, if you select it as your default, the system will automatically bypass this screen and take you directly to the transportation cockpit. What's important to know here is that the planning profile for STO is the following. So we would always add under the planning profile the only one we have, which is the one for STOs, and we would select it. That would populate our field here for planning profile. And then for freight unit, we would do the same thing. We would select the freight unit profile. So you see we have two, but one is for troops and the other one is for UN. So the only one we're selecting here is the one for UN. That's all we have to do. We could also add the freight order selection profile, but if we do that, remember in the cockpit, we're also going to see the freight orders that have already been planned. I'm not adding that here because I don't want to confuse you with all the freight orders that have already been planned. We saw that yesterday. Actually, Maria was asking questions about 
what do we do if we already plan, if we can delete the freight orders. So if you want to delete any freight orders that you already planned for, I would add here the freight order selection profile for STOs, which if we did, would be the one here for STO. We would not select the one for troops. But in this case, I'm going to bypass that and just go with the selection that I have now. You can also add a description, whether STO X works, or you can put here simply STO. Once you have that, you click on continue, and that takes you directly to your cockpit. And all these freight units that are here are the ones that as a TS-07 for the receiving plant, you still have to plan transportation for. Okay, if you were the TS-07 in the issuing plant, this would look exactly the same for you. So all you're seeing is what you're planning transportation for. Okay, any questions so far? Before we start planning? If not, I'll move on. Okay, it doesn't seem like you guys have any other questions. So let's move on to planning. So how did we do planning? Hold on, I just saw two new uh, attendees that want to uh, join the session, so I'm just granting them access. Okay, so I'm going to plan transportation for this freight unit here at the top, 1652, which is going from this loading location, which if you hover over it, over the hyperlink, you can see it's for Unamid El Fasher, to the destination location, which is this one, which is Unami. Okay, and it's quite far, but I think it's Tam Tamimi, the location. So basically, we're transporting these goods from this origin location to this destination location, and the dates, as we saw before, we have right here, earliest date of delivery and also latest date of delivery. Okay, so we could always combine these freight units if we want to according to the delivery dates. So in this particular case, we could combine any of these freight units, if not all, because they're all going to the same destination location and they're all getting there on the same dates. So instead of going one by one and planning one freight unit and going to the transportation proposal, I could actually select all of these if I wanted to and transport them together. So in like this, I would save on transportation cost instead of doing using one vehicle and one carrier for one set of goods, I could use the same for the entire set of goods. Of course, if, if this is possible for the carrier to transport all these goods together. We'd have to see what types of goods we have. So I'm only going to plan one freight unit, which is our top one here. You select the freight unit, you click on transportation proposal, and the system will now generate the proposals according to the master data it has. This master data that it's going to display now in terms of lanes and locations and means of transport has been added or put together based on historical information from missions that are actually doing transportation now for goods. So all the locations here, the ports, the means of transportation according to port, this is all historical data that we've gathered from different entities. This is what the proposals look like after I've selected the freight units. Remember that we're looking at proposals here, 9, 10, 12, 20, 16, for specific freight units and the amount of stages, which means different freight orders, different legs that will be involved in the entire transportation process. We have our first source location, our first, let's say, uh, airport. Then we have from uh, El Janina Airport to Baghdad Airport, from Baghdad Airport to final destination. So there's a total of three legs, three freight orders, three different stages involved in this transportation proposal. Why is Transportation Proposal 9 my first one? Because probably the, there's been a filter, as you can see here, there's already been a filter in terms of duration. So I've told the system that I want to select the Transportation Proposal that takes the least time to arrive to my mission. That doesn't mean it's the cheapest. It's probably the most expensive because it's traveling by air. If there's any other means of transportation, we could always just scroll down and look for it. Or, as I said yesterday, we can go to the Define filter here, select a different means of transportation, 
by selecting here first from the drop-down the means of transportation and then here say that it is or contains the words C and if there were any means of transportation that would go by C when I click on OK the result of the transportation proposals would change okay, so you could always filter here differently by source by means of transport by distance by cost you could do it right here directly just by defining a filter or you could simply move on through the columns and sort and filter through each individual column according to what you want to search by if you want to do it by cost you could always just scroll over to the right and if you see here at the top you have the freight order cost and we could always just click here and go through ascending so we have the cheapest at the top and that's the one that is actually there so at the same time number nine is the shortest in terms of duration and it's also the cheapest okay that's just a coincidence that in the training environment that is the case okay so let's move over to the left and we have our proposals here I'm gonna select because remember you have to select the best option whether it's this one or the top one and we can simply go to accept planning and this will eventually give us the um, estimated freight orders that we want to plan for so if I click on accept planning now that I've selected the proposal you see here to the right where we have our freight orders we have the three legs the three freight orders that are still not complete remember these uh, sort of acronyms that we saw yesterday until we don't have our 6-1 document number that means we haven't done anything so at this point and this was something Maria was also making reference to yesterday we could still go back and plan again so if we're not happy with this result we can simply select our freight unit again and plan transportation proposals if by any chance we save and now these numbers turn into documents for freight orders we could still select them again delete them and plan again so at this point we can either generate more proposals or delete them so what we're doing here is we're simply estimating and this is important that you guys understand this we're estimating transportation proposals we're not telling the carrier or if this were a UNOE scenario the vendor what route they have to take what means of transport they have to take we're simply estimating a transportation proposal based on our historical data so eventually when we forward this in our uh, solicitation for freight the freight forwarder or carrier could still come back to us and say well this is the route I'm taking and this is the way it's going to be transported all we're providing here is an estimation and why we're doing this work because it feels like why am I doing all this extra work is that in the long run in a year time or two years time eventually the TM system will be gathering not only the historical data but the actual data that's been brought back to us by the carriers and vendors and we'll have the most up-to-date and accurate data that reflects actual cost actual transportation lanes actual means of transportation from our vendors and carriers and eventually TM at one point by gathering all this data when we generate a transportation proposal it will reflect the most actual and the cheapest and best way of transporting the goods based on all this data that we've been gathering throughout the years so again this system is still very new and right now is just basing all this data on historical data every time we request a solicitation for freight every time we request a vendor to transport goods TM is also gathering that data and eventually updating it every time we generate a proposal that's why it's important that we do this process we're not telling them what to do the carriers and vendors we're just estimating so that we as an organization become smarter and also can start learning how to save cost based on all this data that we're gathering okay so we have our proposals here to accept them we click on save and we'll see how this changes to a 6-1 document number and now we finally have our freight orders generated okay for the freight unit that we've been planning which was this one here 
1655, if I can see it correctly from there. Okay, and the dates that it was done for. So basically, now that we have that, we can directly navigate to any of these freight orders and view them and view the details in them. But this would eventually be exactly what we were explaining in our presentation. And I'm going to go back to it to show you guys where we left off and where we are. So I'm going to put the presentation here. And we see, if I make this a little bigger, is that what we did just now is this portion here, everything that had to do with the planning. We had our DTRs, we searched for it, we saw that we had our freight units, we selected these freight units. In this case, I would be on this column because it was an X-Works scenario. So I was the receiving plant. I planned my freight unit, TM generated proposals, I selected the best one, it calculated the charges, it created the legs, the freight orders, and it also generated an SOW document. So let's see that. We go back to TM. If now that we have our freight orders, I click on any of them, I'll be able to see the SOW document and the estimated charges for this transportation. Now, the charges we would see in this tab, and the charges I would see if I performed the packing. That's why right now we don't even have an estimation of charges. If I click on the product line, we see that our estimated charges are zero. And this, I'm doing this on purpose because we haven't packed anything. This is to show you how important the packing details are and why we should always um, have make sure that in ECC the packing details are reflected in the outbound or inbound delivery documents because this will provide us with an estimated charge. This estimated charge is the one we're going to be providing the freight forwarder or carrier when we solicit freight. And based on those charges, we can make a comparison throughout the years whether the charges that we have in our master data reflect are the real data out there in, in, let's say, in the market in real life. If every time we're soliciting freight, the freight forwarders coming back to us with an outrageous amount based uh, on our uh, estimated charges, we could always reconsider if maybe we need to start um, soliciting for new contracts and uh, new carriers and freight forwarders. If we don't do this properly, we're never going to be learning and we're always going to be, let's say, uh, spending too much on transportation. We're never going to become smarter as an entity in terms of transporting goods. Okay, so that is why I wanted to go through the charges tab. Now, what I want to show you is the SOW document. To see that in our freight order, that represents only one of the legs. If we look at the stages in this particular uh, leg, we'll see that this is the one for source location to destination location airport. So. El Janina Airport. This is only one stage in our transportation proposal. Okay, every freight order will define the stage that it's, let's say, covering. If we go to this folder here and we go to the Output Management tab, we can see if we select the SOW, and here let me expand this selection here a little bit. SOW short form and we click on document preview, we will be able to see the SOW document that has been generated. This is the SOW document that we'll be downloading. If we need to edit it, we can edit it once we download it. But this is the one we're going to be attaching to the shopping cart for freight. What does this include? It includes the STO number, the outbound delivery number, and all the legs that are linked to it. It contains information as to what requirement we have for transportation of goods. Also, the details on this transportation. So it's an X-Works scenario and where it's coming from and where it's going to. What we are transporting. And if it's packaged, it would also show us the dimensions. And that's why it's important if you see this column is empty because we didn't perform the packing. We don't have a package ID, so the cost is 0 0.21. Of course, this is training environment costs, but the costs are affected because we don't have the correct information of weight, volume, and so on. We also have the information of 
the consigner, where it's coming from, and where it's going to. Okay, so that's what I wanted to show you in terms of the SOW document, the one we will have to attach later on to the next part of the process. If I go back to my PowerPoint, we've seen all this that I'm showing here on screen, and eventually we just saw the SOW document. So right now, the role of the TIA-07 in terms of planning transportation has been covered here. We saw that we search for DTR, we plan our freight unit, we select the best proposal, and we generate our SOW document. Up to there, the role of the TIA-07 in TM is done in terms of planning. Okay, now we would switch to the TIA-07, uh, TIA-08 role, sorry, uh, on this column here when it comes to procurement of freight. So now that we have the SOW, the process to procure freight would occur just like it does now naturally. So if we can go to our next slide here, the entire process of procuring freight, where it's creating a shopping cart for freight, approving it, uh, selecting the, shop, the shopping cart from the cockpit, creating the RFX, solicitation, PO, all that process is exactly the same as it occurs nowadays. But we are now attaching the SOW document to the shopping cart so that we can provide an estimation of cost to the uh, carrier. Once we receive the final freight PO from the carrier, we will now, as TS08, because now the role has changed here to TS08, we can assign this carrier to each freight order, and we can assign the freight PO to each of the freight orders. And why do we do this as TS08? We do this so that the carrier responsible for transporting goods can now see the transportation requirement in the system we saw yesterday that was called CCP, the Carrier Collaboration Portal. It's important that the TS08 assigns a carrier and freight PO to each one of these legs. And then again, as TS08, it would also be the responsibility of this person to, sorry, to edit the freight orders with the actual routes, dates, and charges. Okay, so eventually, as the TS08, I would have to go one freight order by freight order, and let me just scroll up here. And I'll show you this as a TS-08. We would go to the Charges tab, and eventually our responsibility would be to update the estimated charges that we should have here if we would have packed properly with the actual charges that the uh, carrier has provided to us. And again, why is this done? Because in the long run, the estimated charges that we put here versus the actual charges in a year time, two years time, will eventually make the system more intelligent and the calculations will be more and more accurate to a point where we will have actual estimation of cost without the need to, let's say, um, be dependent on the cost that the carriers provide to us. So that's why this is very important here. Any questions so far before I log in as the TS08 and uh, update some of the uh, locations, charges, and so on. Okay, so I'm going to log out of TM as the TS-07, and I hope, uh, Andrew, the uh, role of the TS-07 is becoming clearer, at least in TM. I know you still may have some doubts as to what is expected or mainly who is expected to do these things. Uh, this, uh, as we discussed in, in the conference in Entebbe, is something that the missions uh, have to decide for, okay? We're not assigning the roles to anyone. It's the missions who will assign these roles. But let me unmute you because I think you raised your hand. Andrew? Yes, yes. Uh, Thanos, better. <laughs> Uh, Fanos? Right? Okay. Yes, yes, yes. You, yes. Uh, yeah, I knew I wasn't pronouncing your last name yes, correctly. Yes. <laughs> no okay. worries. Uh, so it's very clear the um, 07 uh, in uh, STR and STO. I don't know because I was out of the office yesterday, so I didn't have the catch up the okay. yesterday presentation. I don't know if it's going to be similar. It's going to be similar with the, um, with the goods, with the. Um, 
EOE. Uh, UNOE scenarios, right? Yeah. Correct, 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 yeah. Exactly. Okay. Very good. So that's exactly the case, right? Those who were in yesterday's session, like I think Maria was in yesterday's session, everything I just performed in TM in, in terms of planning transportation has been exactly the same. She probably didn't even notice a difference of the things that I did. So what you do in TM is exactly the same. Okay. Yes. But it, it depends on the According case. To you. It depends on the case. Uh, yes, of course, you could always, what could be different is that you could combine freight units, the planning profile elements that we're adding, right, when I, if you're looking at the screen now, the planning profile elements that we added in UNOE scenarios were also different because we have to now separate FCAs from XWorks from DAPs. In STOs, you just have one planning profile, which makes it easier. But in terms of what you do in TM, the buttons you click on the process is exactly the same according to your role. Now, the only thing is that if you have a TS07 and 08 role, you're only managing transportation for things that come from transfers, right? STOs, STRs. When you have a TS0102, you're managing transportation only for UN owned goods. And the INCO terms will also define if it's a vendor transporting, if it's a freight forward transporting. But the things you do in TM, where you go, where you click, the profiles you select, the actions are very similar, if not identical. Okay. The question is if, if, some, if uh, someone has to do the 07 and 08 together, it's happened or it's not, we cannot do it that. There could be missions that according to or based on their size, you may have someone that has both roles, TS07 mm -hmm. and 08, but that's not usually the, the, the process, right? It should be split between the two because the TS08 should be linked to someone working in the freight procurement division, while the TS07 should probably be given to a MoveCon role. Yes, correct. The MoveCon role move is zero, zero 07, but uh, the MoveCon in uh, MoveTCIP is only one guy, me. So when I'm out oh, of the okay. office uh, during, okay. during the holidays, someone has uh -huh. to follow all this zero 07. Of course, this is, this is a problem that the, our chief has to solve it, not the, mm -hmm. the, the employees, but uh, uh, my replacement in the inbound coordinator, let's say, uh, which is a procurement officer assistant and have the same yes. role? What do you think? Well, here's the thing. I'm not the one to answer that or to make that decision okay, because yes. I would think that if the mission is, is small and you eventually need the backup and the help, it's really the mission that makes that decision. So if your chief or whoever okay. has to make the decision thinks that yes. this should be the case, then it should be the case. But basically, okay. T02s and 08s should be linked to either procurement division for goods or procurement division for freight. Okay, okay. This is my question now. Thank you. All right. Yes, thanks. Okay, no problem. Anytime you have another question, Fanus, just uh, raise your hand, okay? okay raise raise your hand. Click on the icon for the hand raised, because <laughs> if you raise okay. your hand, I won't see you. Roger. <laughs> All right, Fanus. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. All right, and that goes for everyone else. If you have a question, just uh, click on the hand icon and we can uh, answer that. I'm sure that not only Fanus has questions, but others also have it. So don't be embarrassed to ask and don't think any question is uh, stupid. We're here to actually cover all these questions. You guys are having very little time to learn a lot of uh, different processes. So you deserve all the time you, uh, you need and uh, I'm here to do that. And if we need to extend the WebEx another 15 minutes or half an hour, we can do that as well. Okay, you let me know. Okay, we have another question from Maria. Hi, Maria. I think we're having issues with your mic today. I can't hear you. There you go. I think now it's Hello? fine. Yes, Maria? You just disappeared again. Can you hear me now? Yes. 
Yes, there you go. Perfect. You can hear me now? Yes. Hello? Yes, I can. Yes, Maria? I think you're you're muting yourself and unmuting yourself. Uh, I could hear you perfectly, and now you just appear muted. Let me see now. Maria? Hello? Hello? Now. Now. Can you hear me now? Yeah, there you go. So whatever you're doing, keep it there. <laughs> okay. Yes, we can. We could hear you, Maria. You you were okay. fine. Okay, you can hear me now. Yes. Okay. Yes, All we right. can. The question I wanted to ask, because um, our colleagues from uh, IAU unit, the requisitioning unit, asked me to to address it today. Yesterday they attended this, but in our mission, I think the confusion was done in the role mapping. Those colleagues, uh, we have assigned the TS01 role, but they're not doing planning. They're just doing the requisitioning. So they are wondering why do they have to be assigned with that role if they're not going to do the planning and they just would, will be provided with uh, the SOW by the, our planners, funnels, or whoever is doing it. Um, is a bit of confusion there because if if they are not going to do planning, I think from what I've heard here, they don't need a TS01 role. Okay, so basically, uh, I was saying Hello? before that when we received the list of attendees, yes, Maria. Now uh, you can't hear me. Yeah, I'm listening. Yes. All right, perfect. So when we received yes. the list of uh, attendees and roles. The roles were assigned per attendee, right? So if somebody in the requisitioning department is being given a TS01 role, that's beyond me why this would be the case. Usually these roles should be provided to people in, in MoveCon. Requisitioners maybe are provided a TS03 role. That could be possible because that's a, an, a display all role. Okay. But uh, why they would receive a TS01 is, is beyond me. Now, maybe that could be a mistake or not, but that would have to be made from your side, yes. that decision. Okay. okay, yes, this is what um, I believe from what I've heard, because before I didn't know the concept. Now that I've seen it, I believe they shouldn't have the TS01, but we will uh, check it here. Thank you very much, Brian. Okay, thanks, Maria. So I'm going to pass on now to Fanus because I see you raising your hand again. Fanus? Yes, Brian. Brian, yes, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Yes, the, we issue can. Is from, the issue was from the beginning, Brian, as in Entebbe. You remember in Entebbe, we have the conference. Yes. This was yes. the most important because the people, before they make the, the <laughs> the training, they have to know what they are doing before. Don't get, because we carry the roles to the people without knowing what they are going to do. This is the, what is exactly. frustrating. Mm -hmm. And in the future, when you have another in, implementation on other training, they have to give the steps to the people what they have to do in the system first to see what is done in the system. And then we give the role, not to give the role to the people. And then they, they are confused. And they don't they don't know what they are doing. Do you understand the issue? What is the issue uh, now? I, no, I understand. That's been the issue from the beginning of Umoja, as far as I'm concerned. I because so. every yes, time we deliver, they are yes. continue the same, the same, and the same, the same mistake. Because if you are doing the new new program, you give to the people the steps what they have to do in the program, and if they see clearly and what is happening in the system, what they have to do in the system. They they will know who is doing what. <laughs> this was the, the the situation because they asked the, to give us the role before they know what they have to do. Yes, uh, I know. And usually Understand. when we and now request we have to go back. attendees, <laughs> mm -hmm. we have to when go we back request now attendees for a workshop. <laughs> yeah. Fanos, when we request yeah. attendees for a workshop, usually what we do is require the people that will actually be doing these transactions in the system, right? So usually the people that are sent to our workshops already know what they're expected to be doing. Now, it is true that sometimes it's not clear as to why am I doing this transaction if this is not my usual job, right? Why am I getting this role? 
uh, these are things that still eventually happen nonetheless. We do receive a list of people that are supposed to come to our trainings because they're the ones who will be performing those actions. Nonetheless, once they're in our training, a lot of them still wonder why they're in our training uh, because they yeah. don't perform these roles. But we only right. accept those that are supposed to be doing that. Even those that are invited to this uh, training, when they were invited, they were told to us by whoever sent us the, the list of attendees that they would yeah. be T01, 02, 03s. That's why we're continuing to invite them and train them. Now, if they're yeah, not going to yeah. perform the roles later yeah. on, then all they have to do is not take the assessment and they won't be provided the roles. But eventually, in the, in the mission, somebody needs to have these roles when TM of goes course, live. Of course, of course, of course. Yes. But this, it, this, is the, um, this is the issue, that they, they don't give us a lot of time. Of course, the mission, they didn't have money to send some people there to train them and bring it back to the mission so we can go smoothly the implementation. Now we have this training, of course, is very helpful from your side and we are very uh, supporting from you and thank you for that. And that's why we raise some frustration to you, <laughs> unfortunately. <laughs> but don't worry, we don't, have, we don't have any issue with you and your guys. We thank you very much for your... But we have this frustration because you see the missions... The, what can I say? But we are positive that we are going to do whatever we can uh, up to this stage, okay? All right, Fanos, I definitely Thank hear you. you and understand you and because I know it's a, it's an ongoing issue and uh, honestly, all I can do from my side is, is to provide the best explanation possible and then and 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 support you guys as much as we can. All okay, right. okay, so, continue. <laughs> okay, I'll mute you and whoever else needs uh, to speak up, just click on the icon, okay, for the hand. Thank you, guys. So right now, in the meantime, I just logged in as the uh, TS08. And now what I would be doing, now that we've planned our uh, transportation proposals, you see that now that I logged in as the TS08, I have less tabs to navigate through in uh, TM. The tab that is missing is the one for planning because I shouldn't be allowed to plan, right? I should only be allowed to update the freight orders with the information provided by the carriers. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. And to do that, I first need to find my uh, freight orders, right? The freight orders that I'm supposed to update. To do that, I go to this tab here, ERP Logistics Integration, or I can go to the Freight Order Management tab, since we haven't seen that one before, and I can search for my freight orders based on the STO or outbound delivery document that I have. In your cover pages, if you at the screen I'm showing now, you have, you have this information here too. And what I'm going to be doing is searching by this STO, and I'm going to assign the freight PO and the carrier, carrier to, this, uh, to these freight orders. And as I mentioned yesterday, you could assign a different carrier to each freight order, if that were the case, if you're using three different carriers to transport your goods, or you could assign one carrier to three different freight orders, and freight orders or six or seven or as many freight orders as you have. So the first thing I'll do is search for my STO. Now again, I'm only looking for my freight orders now. ETRs are my freight units, only the freight orders. The best way to do so is to do so is change the query. Change query. Click, here. Click here. And I think I somebody had a question. Uh, is it you, Fanus? Because I have uh, Marie as well. I'm sorry, but, yes. but the, the, um, we cannot hear you very well. This is the... Okay. We, we we cannot hear you very well. The the voice is not very good. It's, I don't know. Double your your speech. Yeah. I don't know. Okay. Something happened with the microphone. You. Okay. That's it. Right. All right. Thank you. Hopefully it's it's better. Okay. So I'm gonna continue and hopefully the uh, mic is working fine now. And I know sometimes there's some issues with the audio. Okay. So I was saying that I'm going to search for my STO as a TS08. To do that, I went to the change query uh, option that was to the top right of the screen. And now I have a ton of other fields that I can search by. The one that I'm interested in is this one here for POs, STOs, or 
ECC deliveries, whether inbound or outbound. If I add here my STO or PO or here inbound or outbound, I can click on apply and I should be able to see all the freight orders that are linked to me. So in this case, I don't see any. Let me go back to change query and see if maybe uh, there's some of the fields that are not populated correctly. And if not, I could always just search for my uh, freight units and then go one by one and show you guys a different way of doing this. So maybe if I delete this date here and make sure that I copy the correct Okay, I'm um, the correct uh, TS08, and it seems like I have my correct STO. If not, I'll just um, look for another one if uh, by any chance the training environment is acting up on me or if I have an issue with my user. Okay, so it seems to be the case. So let me do a search uh, differently now. I'm going to go and search for my DTR. And if I'm having trouble finding my DTR, then I know it's a problem with, with the user. Okay, so again, I'm gonna perform the same exercise and I'm gonna to go to change query, but this time I'm in the ERP logistic integration. Yes, Fanus? Hey Brian, I have this issue in the, in the past when we have the implementation uh, phase one of TM with the vehicles. I put the yes. um, correct STO and doesn't apply. They should put the, we have to put more details, let's say the, um, the DTR, I think so, yeah. Or the freight uh, order. And once you put the freight order or the DTR, it appeared, correct? Yes, 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 this is the, was the issue. And I, I was, why is doing that, the system? Because you should uh, work with the um, STO. Can you speak with also with the um, technician about that, if they can, if they can fix this issue. Yes, this, this is something that was happening to us yeah, in, yeah, in the yeah, training yeah. environment too. A lot of the times it has to do with the user and who they're mapped, yeah. uh, what yeah, they're mapped yeah, to. Yeah, yeah. So, and, and it's happening to me now in the training environment too, right? I'm trying to find the freight orders that are linked, but I am, I'm having trouble by using the STO information. So, so you put the plan, the, the, the plan also, if you put the mission, sometimes they don't, doesn't work, the system doesn't work. So you have to go more details to find the, the number of the, of the EDR. Exactly. So uh, yeah. I'll just do this quickly. I'm going to log in again, as, uh, but thank you for, for making that comment. So I'm going to just go very quickly and uh, log in now with um, the user that I had before, okay, just to take note of my uh, number, and then I can do this uh, quickly. Okay, so I'm just going to rush through this and see if it's an issue with the user or any other issue possible. So right now, just to give you guys an idea, I'm logging in again as a TS07 just to get the accurate number of my uh, DTR and maybe even the freight order so I can take note of that. So I'm going to bypass uh, the issue that the system is giving me. It seems that the 548 was my number here, 548, yes. So I'm going to click on that. We see that here it's working fine, so it has to be an issue with the uh, user. And just bear with me for a second here. And I can see. Okay, so let me just pick that up. Second. And another one of the issues that we're having just with the uh, training environment is that we have so many people doing transactions at the same time with the same users that a lot of the times if this happens to you guys during your exercise, it's important that you know that other missions are also sharing your uh, transactions. So it could be that when you're performing transportation proposals, they're already planned. The minute that you 
think that you plan them, somebody else has planned them for you. So it's just something to keep in mind. It doesn't happen all the time, but sometimes it does happen. It's something we're trying to deal with because we have a limited amount of users. Nonetheless, of course, this shouldn't happen in production. Nobody should be planning your uh, transportation proposals. So let's see here. I'm going to look for it here. Two, three. Now I see there's a question. Just give me one second. Let me just make sure that I take note of my information here. And I'll unmute you in a second, okay? Just bear with me another minute. So just so I make sure that I'm performing this correctly this time and I can show you guys without any issues. I know you guys are not seeing anything on screen now. I'm doing this on a separate screen. Okay, uh, just give me one more second. If I can just go fast through it. And uh, was this uh, you, Maria, or Fanus? Are you there? Did you have the question, or was it someone else? Maria, was it you? Hello, it's me, yes. Okay. Hello? So tell me, Maria. Yes. Yes, Maria. No, I just uh, wanted to tell you, you are looking for the freight order number? I was looking for the freight now, order Now you were looking for the... Yeah, because yes. I had a screenshot, I would have tell it to you. That's why I was trying to okay. contact you. <laughs> All right. But All not right. to no. look for it. That's why I was... <laughs> okay. No, no problem. So, you know what? We can do two things. I can... Uh, I just uh, generated one really quickly or we can use the one that, that you have so we can search through that one too, okay? So I'm gonna just log back in and now I'm gonna do so as okay, the- Okay, shall, uh, shall I give you that one? PS08, yes, so I'm just gonna log in quick and if you want, you can give me the ones you have so everyone who's attending can see that we can search by either the freight orders individually, if by any chance you're not having, uh, you're having issues finding it with the uh, STO. Okay, so let's see. You say you have the freight orders, correct? Yeah, Maria? the freight order okay. I have here from the previous screenshot is, hello? Yes, uh, hold it's on. It's so, 6 one. Okay, I'm going to add them here. So I'm going to add, you're going to give me the three of them, correct? I have the freight order number 6 one. Okay, 6 one. Zero, zero, zero. Yes. One three, one three, five nine one, five nine one, five nine one, five nine one. One I have here. Uh, let okay. me see if I have another one. Just a minute. Uh, yes, the other one is six one. Okay. Some reason. Three zeros. Mhm. Mm yes. One three. One three. 592, 592. Okay, so then And I the other one is 593 at the end. 593, yes. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yes. Nonetheless, I'm still clicking on this and I have all the freight orders, but when I click on apply, I seem to not be able to see them anyway here. So I definitely have an issue with the username provided. Let me see if I can go one by one, because you can also display a freight order individually here. If you just search for the freight order by itself, three, and it's five, no, one, three, five, nine, one, correct? That was it. So it shows here. Five, nine, one. Yeah. And we can continue with that one. All right, so you see we can search for them individually. So I'm just having some issue with the environment finding it, but at least like this, I was able to show you guys how to find it uh, differently. So there's another way if here, when you click on the freight order tab and you see the overview freight orders, 
This is to search for several of them at the same time or if try to find them through the outbound or the STO. If by any chance you're not being lucky with that, you can always go to display freight order and this will allow you to search for an individual freight order. So if you know the number of it, you can simply add it here like I just did and that will display your freight order. If you see here, this is the freight order that I just looked for, 6113591. And that's the freight order that we're looking at. If we go to document flow, we see that that freight order is linked to the freight units and DTR that I was planning before. Okay, so thanks, Maria. Thanks for taking note of that. So I also take note of that myself and see that it's 91, yeah, 92, and 93. Okay, and that, that is very, very helpful. I can, I'll give you uh, 10 extra points on the test for paying attention. Okay, so I'm going to mute you again, and if anybody has another question, just please click on the hand raised, okay? Thank you. Okay, so basically what we were doing here is uh, two things, right? We were first assigning the um, carrier, and we're also assigning the freight PO, and we're also updating charges, locations, and dates. We can do this individually for each freight order as we're doing here, or we can do this in group. Okay, so yesterday we saw how to do it in group. I can go through that again now with some other freight orders, but let's see how we can do it individually. So if you guys look at yesterday's recording, you can see how to do it in group, and now we'll see how to do it individually. So we select our freight order here, and now once we're on it, we can see the business partner tab here will allow us to view the carrier, see we have the shipper, in this case the shipper is the source mission. If this were a UNOE scenario, we'd be talking about the vendor. Consignee is the destination location, so in this case it'll be uh, Baghdad. And the carrier, <clears throat> as we have not assigned a carrier yet, the default carrier is Z dummy. It's always going to be the case. To add or assign a carrier, what we do is we go to edit, and you see how now the field becomes editable. And here in the matchbox, if we select it, we can always search for our business partner. Okay, so we can simply add the business partner that is in our credentials page, which is this one. And by adding that here, we should be able to find the one that is linked to this BP, which is Scan Global Logistics. We select it, and that's the one that will appear here. And once we save, this will now be the new uh, carrier. You see the name and street and all the information linked to it has now been assigned. Okay, so we have assigned here the one that we are looking for, the carrier that is going to be transporting our goods. Now this carrier, the moment we have assigned it, will now have access in CCP to submit events for this uh, for these transportation of goods. Okay, so so far we have our carrier and the execution carrier. We could also add here the information related to the uh, <clears throat> freight PO, but there's also ways that you can add different fields and different information to the uh, to the freight order. Now, to go back, to sh now that I've showed you how to do this individually, I'm going to go back and see if I can simply uh, assign my freight PO to this uh, freight order here. Before I do that, let's look at the charges and the locations, okay, if we want to change that. If we go to the charges tab like we saw before, the charges tab will display. We saw this before as the TS07. It was just a, a display all view. We can add here the actual charges. We're still on edit mode, if you see at the top. We can add here the actual charges for that freight order. Okay, so we can add here the price. That will be the price linked to the gross volume calculation. So remember the calculation base here is always going to be by gross volume, which is cubic meters in this case. And we're adding this basic calculation. If we click on enter, the calculation at the top will also change. So if let's say we had an estimation cost before, that estimation cost would be shown here. But when we add our actual charges, that cost changes now based on the actual cost that we're adding on this field. 
and this is related to this specific freight order. So the actual cost for adding is by freight order. Okay, and that's the way we would update the charges in each individual freight order. Once we have done that, we would simply click on save, and that would save our changes here for the actual charges. To change the locations and dates, we can go to the stages. And here where we have our stages, we see that, again, edit is still a display. Uh, edit has been clicked here, sorry. So we can always go to our destination location or whichever location is available for editing. And we can make a change here by selecting the matchbox and selecting now a new location. So if let's say we want to switch the location, but we still want to keep an airport instead of a port, all we have to do is make sure that we write the information we're looking for. So an airport, click on search, and we can see the list of, in this case, let me just put air, if by any chance, and instead of is, you're always better off clicking on contains, okay? Because if you make any mistake or the system is not uh, returning searches with the is option, click on contains, click on search, and we should have our list here of airports or ports. The same thing would go for <clears throat> C or any other type of port. In this case, we don't have C, so we can add port, click on search. And whether it's an airport, um, hold on one second. Okay, sorry, I just have to clear my throat. And we have all the options here for airport or any other type of port that we can select through and all the options that we have. Now, what is important is if we're changing the... Um, let's say any of the locations in the freight orders as a TS-08 or as a TS-02, if this were a UNOA scenario, we will only be changing the main carriage. In this case, I believe that our source location here is the uh, mission, and this is the first report or report that we're changing the location to. So this wouldn't be the accurate freight order to change the location in. We would always have to change the location of the main carriage, which if I'm not mistaken should be the one that has the 9-2. Always the one that's going from one airport to another or one port to another. By changing that location, the other two from the uh, destination and source location will automatically update. So you only have to change one of the locations, and it's always the one for the main carriage, not the pre-carriage or the on-carriage, only the main carriage, and the change there will edit all other locations. You can also make changes to the planned departure and planned arrival dates here. So basically, as a TS-08, your role to edit the charges and to change the locations and dates would be done in two tabs, one in the charges, one in the stages. Okay, and that's exactly how you would be making any of the changes there. Okay, so now that we have our freight orders here and we have made all of our changes, we could always save the changes that we've made. And these freight orders will now have the details and information from <clears throat> the newly uh, actual data, sorry, the actual data that the... Uh, carrier has provided to us in the freight PO. All right, so, so far we have seen all this, the planning stage for the TS-07 and also how the TS-08 would assign carrier freight PO edit routes and dates and charges in each of the individual freight orders. Okay, so we didn't repeat this, but since we logged in, this was an X-Work scenario, we were logging in as the receiving plant, TS-08, and as the receiving plant, TS-08, we made these changes. We were the TS-07 for the receiving plant to plan, and we are now the TS-08 from the receiving plant to manage the freight orders. So I hope this is clear. Anything to clarify on what we just did now as TS-08 in the system? Okay, so uh, Fanus, was that you? 
or no, Maria? Was that you, Maria? Any questions? Yes, I just wanted to ask when we are changing. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, Maria. Hello? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, I just wanted to ask when we are changing the destination location, the Okay, when we are changing the destination location, the cost is not affected. Okay, so when we are exactly, you would first have to Hello? change. Yes, Maria, you hear me? Okay. I, I think yes. you can hear me. Okay, perfect. So, very good question. So, eventually, here I change the charges first, and then I change the location. But remember, when we're, once we're adding the actual cost, that actual cost will be unchanged, okay? So we're adding the new location first, and then we're editing the actual charge. So that actual charge will remain the same. We could change the location 50 times after if we want to. The actual charge will always be the one we added manually. The only one that would change or could change would be the estimated, but that doesn't happen after you've planned, okay? The estimated cost only appears after the planning. So in a sense, even if you change the location afterwards, the actual cost remains the one you added manually. All right, okay. All right, Maria. Thank you, Brian. You're welcome. Okay, any other questions? Okay, so we can move on to maybe our, I know that it's 12 o'clock, but if you guys want, I can show you a bit of the event management, which would be the last portion. I can show you a bit today, and then tomorrow we can spend a lot more time on event management and maybe even review some of the aspects of the, um, uh, the uh, planning transportation and editing the uh, freight orders. Because we basically, yesterday we spent some time on the planning portion for UNOE. We would spent some time on the planning portion for STO. We also did the same for the TS-02 and TS-08 today. So we've had two sessions where we did the planning and editing of freight orders, but we haven't seen yet the uh, event management. So I can show you that. Okay, remember to review these presentations when I send them by uh, email. I sent them this morning. So make sure that you review these presentations before you take the assessment. The assessment is programmed for tomorrow uh, during the day. I'll send you guys the link to the test and you guys can take the test during the day. And eventually the link to the test will be closed after tomorrow. If by any chance you can't take it tomorrow, it's not a big problem. You can always let me know when the time and date that suits you best and I can resend you the link. But those of you who are willing to take it tomorrow, I'll be sending the link tomorrow anyway. So I could go through the rest of these uh, slides and I think I can do this quickly because it also impacts the event management. So we left off here. So let me just make sure that I transform this into a presentation mode and we can see the next uh, portion of our presentation, okay? And we'll focus on uh, events. So we saw the uh, managing of freight orders for the AP scenario, so this we can go through quite quickly. So again, if we're looking at an intermission transfer in a DAP Incoterm scenario, again, it's the TS-08 in the issuing plant who will be responsible for managing all these freight uh, POs are all these freight orders, right? Sorry for the freight POs, freight orders. As we see here, it's the issuing plant managing the freight orders in the AP scenario. So that's quite easy. We log in as a TS-08 from the issuing plant and manage all the freight orders. If by any chance it's an X-Works scenario, that's the one we did as a demo in the system, it would be the receiving plant as we saw the TS-08 in the receiving plant who would be planning, or sorry, would be managing all the freight orders, okay? The one we haven't seen is the FCA, and the confusion that I was talking about before comes here, because in an FCA scenario, which is barely the case for STOs, somehow it's a shared responsibility between plants. 
the issuing plant, TS08, will manage the freight orders up until the handover location, okay? And the receiving plant would manage all other freight orders from then on. Now, this is a very strange case, and according to the students we had in the uh, workshop, FCA is not usually used for intermission transfers. It's either a DAP or an XWorks. But nonetheless, it's a possibility to raise STOs with an FCA Incoterm, so I want to explain this to you guys. Okay, we're now just reviewing the freight order management. So that would be the role of TS08. We also saw that we are editing the freight orders with routes, dates, and charges. This uh, slide is showing you guys the intermission management of freight orders for DAP scenarios. So this one is very easy because in intermission scenarios, it's always going to be the issuing plant that is the same as the receiving plant that's going to be managing everything, the transportation and also the freight orders. So this one is quite easy, so I'm just going to skim through this one quickly. That takes us to the event management, and that's what I want to go over. If you guys can still manage to stay for another uh, 10 minutes, I can manage that quickly. The event management, remember that the carriers submit events through CCP, and we'll log into CCP tomorrow to be able to submit events as a TS05. This would be where vendors and carriers log into to submit events. The only reason they can log into and submit events for freight orders is for two reasons. If they're a vendor, because we uh, selected them from the contract when we were raising a shopping cart, or because we assigned them to freight orders here as TS08 or TS02. We assign them to freight orders and they have visibility in CCP of those freight orders. Okay, so we understand how that works. Carriers, I'm oh, sorry, I went too fast on this one. Carriers, sorry guys, back to the screen that we were looking at. Sorry, somehow it just went back. We already saw all these slides. Just went over these. Sorry, um, sorry guys, just went there too quick. I'm in presentation mode again, and this is where we are. So carriers are provided with login credentials, okay, to CCP. These carriers will see the freight orders they are responsible for, and will also be responsible for submitting events related to their stages, okay? So tomorrow we'll log in as carriers, and we'll start uh, submitting expected events and unexpected events. We'll also attach some files, even though this is not the responsibility of the TS07 or 8 or 1 or 2, at least you guys have an idea of what the carriers will be seeing and how these events will look in TM. Panos? Yes, um, Brian, about, yes. about the, um, the carriers. Uh, I have a question. I don't know if the if the local carriers, because we have freight uh, companies which are not in PD contracts, and we have a local uh, uh, vendors, if they are going to be registered before the implementation of two December, I don't know, because the mission has to do it, or the they have to do it uh, by the expert. <clears throat> because we provide we provide a list to the um, to our marine and mm -hmm. to the. Um, and are you about this, uh, the companies? I don't know who is going to contact them. The mission is going to contact them and register in CCP uh, uh, system, or they are going to do it. I don't know who is going to do that. Okay, very good. So very, very good question, especially because you also mentioned local uh, freight forwarders. So not all, uh, we're expecting global freight forwarders to be registered into CCP, and local freight forwarders, I believe, as uh, the last update uh, yesterday or two days ago, was that local freight forwarders would not be added into CCP, which would mean that the TS-01 and TS-07 would be the ones responsible for submitting events on their behalf in TM. So the until they're registered in CCP, it would still be the role of the TS-01 or TS-07, depending on the scenario, to submit events in TM, okay? But eventually the idea is that all local 
freight forwarders and global freight forwarders are registered in CCP. Now, who's going to contact them to provide them with the role? That will be done, I believe, that will be explained once we uh, go live or before we go live, they should already have the access to this. So I'm thinking that this is going to be organized by New York, contacted by New York and the roles provided by New York to the uh, carriers and vendors before go live. But now, not all of them will be registered in CCP before go live. Some of them will happen during go live, some of them will happen afterwards. So for now, I could almost guarantee that if you have the role of TS01 or TS07, you're going to be submitting okay. events for them for now. Yes. Okay. Okay. In TM. All right. Okay. okay. But okay. very, very good question. Thank you, Thanos. Okay. So basically, we'll learn tomorrow through uh, the demo how this happens in CCP, but we're going to spend more time in TM submitting events because as Fanos was just asking and the answer that I just provided is that uh, as a TS01 and TS07, you will be submitting events on their behalf. And that takes us to our next screen here, right? In TM, who is responsible for submitting events? The TS07 role, yes, but from the receiving or the shipping plant, it also depends on the INCO term that was added in the STO. If we're talking about intermission transfers, the shipping plants TS07 will be submitting events for the APFCA INCO terms, and the receiving plant will be submitting events for XWorks FCA INCO terms. Okay, so eventually, if you have managed transportation for that STO, for that freight unit, you will be managing events for that freight unit as well. The same thing, if you have managed and you're in the shipping plan, you have managed transportation, you will also be managing the events, okay? That's pretty much the logic behind it. If you plan transportation, you manage the events. And in intermission scenarios, of course, since you're doing everything, planning transportation, uh, managing freight orders, you're also going to be managing events, okay? And we'll learn tomorrow, we'll go step by step as to how to update events in TM and upload attachments in TM, but just so you know, it's basically performed in each of the individual freight orders. So we're basically going to be accessing the freight orders and I could even uh, access the ones that we have that uh, Maria provided to me, the ones ending in 919293 tomorrow. And we will go to this tab called execution status. There you go, execution. And we will see how the events are already there, all the planned events are there. The unexpected events are not. I can make this a bit uh, bigger so you guys can see it all. So each freight order will have a different set of planned events, of expected events, and that's why they're there, because they're expected, right? Unloading begin, unloading end, departure, arrival, and so on. These are expected events for that specific leg that, if I'm not mistaken, was going from the source location to the first port. If we want to add an expected event, we'll see that tomorrow, but basically we'll have to access each individual freight order to start updating these events and submitting unexpected events. And whatever we do here in TM for these events will automatically show up in TM uh, in CCP, sorry, for the carriers to visualize it. So whatever it is we update here and upload here in TM will automatically appear in CCP and vice versa. If the vendors, carriers are submitting events, that will also show up in TM. And we can see that tomorrow, how the two uh, systems communicate with each other. All right, so I believe that for today, we've seen enough and covered enough. At least we were able to go through the scenario uh, for uh, STO, the integration fields, and the end-to-end -end completely. Tomorrow we'll do a brief review after we have learned how to submit events. And uh, at any time, if you guys have any questions during the day, if you can reach out to me through email, phone call, we can go through any of the doubts you may have. Any questions before we close the session? All right, Fanus? No, I would like to thank you, Brian. Thank you for the for the training. It was very helpful. I have a, the only question about not this subject, about the rotation, because it's a move con we have also to to be in the TM about the troops. 
in uh, the planning. I don't know, maybe it's New York is going to be to, to do the planning, of course, but I don't know if we have to, if we can to show us how we can make uh, the events also in the system, if it's going to be the same case. We have a freight, yeah. uh, the freight order or... Uh, I see. Okay, so yeah, basically the, the troops management does happen yeah. from New York side. Mm -hmm. We we didn't cover that in the phase two of TM. We we did go through it a bit in phase one. So I can tell you that at least the documents generated in TM are not the same. Instead of a DTR, what you get is an FWO, which is a forwarding order. Okay. So instead of a DTR, it's a forwarding order, and the freight unit is still the freight unit. So two documents are still automatically generated in TM but they're different documents, the uh, FWO instead of the DTR, the freight unit is still the same. And in terms of event management, it's uh, managed the same way. If you're managing troops, usually the transportation of troops will occur by air, so the events that you have are much less, right? It's usually departure and arrival, and you're managing chocks, right? Groups of troops that are being transported together. So okay. there are slight differences, but in the system, it looks exactly the same. You just have less events, but the way you submit them and manage them is exactly the same. The way you look for your forwarding order is the same as looking for your DTR. The way you plan transportation is the same way you plan for uh, UNOE and STO. Okay, okay. But there's the responsibility to update it is in, the, in New York, uh, let's say, or the... The US, sure, yes. the, the, New York is managing everything related to troops right now. Okay, if okay. there's any change on that later on, we'll know. But so far, it's they're the ones managing the troops. Because we didn't have, uh, we didn't receive anything, uh, let's say, about this issue. That's exactly. Right. Yeah, we but, didn't even cover it in the workshop. Ah, okay, okay, okay. Thank you, Brian. All if right, I have Thomas, more questions, I will let you know. Okay. Absolutely, no problem. Thank you again. Bye-bye. Have a lovely afternoon. Bye-bye. You too. So, everyone, thank you very much. If you have no further questions. Okay, I do see in a Q&A, uh, Stella, you said, uh, sorry, I just saw this. Maybe it was answered previously, but the assessment be relevant to each assigned role. People who have taken this and should know all TM roles. Okay, yeah, the assessment is basically 30 questions covering the roles of, yes, TS01, 02, 07, and 08. Okay, so basically, yes, you would have to at least have a basic knowledge of what's involved in, in all these roles, but to be honest with you, they're mainly focused on TM-related processes, not the STO raising or the STR raising or the shopping cart raising or approval of POs. They're basically focused on TM transactions. So if you understand how to do a TM transaction for a TS-01, it's the same for a TS-07. The only difference will be if we ask you a question related to who's responsible, receiving mission or issuing mission. If it's an STO scenario, you'll have to know who's responsible. But there's mainly 20 questions related to uh, things to uh, related to SRM and shopping carts, and then another 10 related to STOs, STR. So there's 10 more questions related to um, UNOE scenarios than there are for STOs. And to pass the test, you need to get a uh, 21. So basically, you would only have to guess one of the STO scenarios. So basically, just to keep it short, it's that. 30 questions, yes, all involved UNOE scenarios, STO, but mainly related to TM. Okay, so any other questions you have, we can see them tomorrow. You can ask me by email or give me a phone call. If all right, thank you all. Hopefully it was a useful session. I'll send you the recording later on too. You already have the exercises, cover pages, and so on to practice. So enjoy the rest of your day.